Today on the bench we want to look at gas discharge tubes or GDT. This one just happens to be a Siemens 23086 PM. A lot of times on boards, especially high-end, high-frequency boards, you may see these soldered in for protection. Not to be confused with or surface mount GDT look similar to these if I get them in the shot here they look very similar but these have had the markings that show they are capacitors I believe this is a fluke 87 5 series and it has several of these that at first I thought were uh, gas discharge tubes and actually they are like this one says 223KZS we have some different ones on this side one of them is a 474K so these are actually capacitors look similar so due to their low capacitance gas discharge tubes are used a lot for high frequency things like telecommunications they're used in uh, sometimes surge suppressors. I know I've seen them in some high-end surge suppressors in the past. But you don't see them that often. But when you do see them, you'll know what they are. I'll bring my meter in here and just show. They have extremely low capacitance. It's one reason why you'll always see them in a telecommunication. Very low capacitance. So if we go to ohm, we ohm it out, it is completely open. Shows no resistance with just a regular multimeter. And this one's not going to conduct till somewhere around 230 volts. Typical gas discharge tubes, they have what they call a minimum breakdown voltage, a, a rated maximum voltage breakdown max, and they also rated by how much current, how much current they can actually handle. I do have a data sheet here and some information on one similar. This is a TDK on a similar device. Not the exact specs of this one, but we can look at how it's got the 230 volt spark over voltage. Nominal input discharge current of 20 kiloamps. The actual uh, nominal alternating current at 50 hertz for one second is 20 amps. And actually on AC uh, discharge at 50 cycles, it can actually go nine cycles at 100 amps. So even though these are small packages, they, they do knock down spikes with quite a punch. A glass discharge tube or GDT it's just a glass enclosed device that's sealed. It contains a special gas mixture which is trapped between two electrodes. They conduct the electrical current after they become ionized by a high voltage spike. They can conduct a relatively high amount of current for their size and they can handle some very large transients. And sometimes they can just do a lot of small transients, but they can handle a very large transient. So inside, if we could, if we could see inside of this, it will be a gas and the two electrodes. And the only thing I have that's similar to that is the old neon, just old neon indicator lamp, 120 volts. The gas, it's nothing but two electrodes into a gas the lights off here but as you can see with it powered off it's nothing but two electrodes in that tube 
very low current indicator. They were very, uh, they were very, very dependable back in the day. You don't see these as much anymore, but before LEDs, that was your indicator to do. Indicator for your tough jobs that you. But we're taking a look at this gas discharge tube and see if we can put some voltage across it and see how it responds and how it acts. And my setup here, I'm going to bring over some helping hands. It's going to hold the gas discharge tube. I got a high voltage capacitor. This happens to be a 2200 microfarad at 450 volts rated capacitor. I'm going to cut my meter on and show the voltage level, which I have about 55 volts on it at the time. At 55 volts, we don't have any current, no arcing. It's well below the threshold. If a spike come in below 55 volts, you would never notice it on the, on the circuit. We are back now with around 110 volts on this, showing 108 right now on this capacitor. So if I take this now and put it across, still no current. It's like an open circuit. A transit of that level would not affect the circuit at all. Now at 160 volts, I'm gonna make sure I have my safety glasses on. 160 volts, we still shouldn't see any, any drop across it, any current. It's still not enough to ignite the gas. Now I'm gonna bring in an actual amp clamp. We can actually see. At 212 volts, if we get any current at all, remove the voltage discharging the capacitor at 212 volts. Anything? Still nothing at 212 volts. Now we actually have 260 volts, and we see that it actually quickly dissipated. Now, once again, I have 260 volts on the cap, charged up. I'm going to try to get the current meter. We can see a brief reading on it. We've already done one discharge at 260 volts to show that at that level it did trigger and, and it actually did ignite the gas discharge and try to suppress the, the transit that we actually faked on it with a, with a cap. So here we go again at 260 volts. This goes to show how much energy they can suppress in a short amount of time, even though it's DC. I wanted to do it with a capacitor where I had a amount of energy there to absorb and, and transit to stop in a very short period of time without without being an actual AC line or or having to fuse something to stop it uh, from potentially overloading and making the device rupture. That's probably long enough today on glass discharge tubes, but I just thought they're very interesting devices. You see them from time to time and sometimes you know I didn't know exactly what they were. I had to, to learn what they were and what they were about. Sometimes it's easy to mistake them for capacitors or sometimes even a type of diode. I did buy some surge suppressors to take apart. Unfortunately, none I bought actually had, they didn't have glass discharge tubes in them. They all had MOVs. Along the same lines as the gas discharge tube, when you see these on circuit boards, the little teeth, the little, across the little slits, Sometimes you see these on power boards as well. Next on the weekly, what is it? Well, what is this? Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.